Hey, good morning, world. It's kind of gray outside the cabin this morning. Thermometer has been hovering around, freezing. And uh, clouds are low, and there's really not a whole lot going on outside. There's a few blue jays kicking around, but mostly, not even the birds seem to be too interested in crawling out of bed today. Old man winter came and he kicked down the door in my home state, bringing everything from like tornadoes to snow. So it's been kind of a weird day. So we've had rain, we've had just not great weather. We'll just call it not great weather. But you know what? Here in the cabin, everything seems to be pretty well under control. Just fire in the wood stove, some hot coffee in the kitchen, stack of books just waiting to be read. Me. Break out the crock pot, put some venison in it in a little while, start cooking some supper. Like I like crock pots. I don't know if anybody else is out there as a crock pot fan, but I like the idea that you can just like slow cook something. It just seems to fit. I mean I like other stuff too, but crock pots, I don't know. It's just something about them. You know, it's, it's one of those days it's just sort of made to pace yourself. Take it easy. Look out the window read a book it's the season where the wild things are all hibernating deep in their burrows and they're just waiting on a warm spring day the nights are quiet the constant hum of bugs and frogs are gone and replaced only with the silence it's out here in the cabin there's just not any traffic like there's occasionally we'll get a pickup truck running down the road late at night but mostly it's nothing Except maybe just the sound of the wind blowing through the branches or down somewhere in the valley you can hear a coyote or a whole family of coyotes howling. We don't have wolves. We don't have wolves here, but we do um, have a wolf moon. We have a wolf moon hanging overhead at night. If I could actually see it from the clouds. But it's there. Hanging up there, reminding us of our wilder selves. Takes us back to the old days when our ancestors slept by campfires and they lived beneath the stars with bare feet and stone spears. Those fires push back the darkness and the cold. Maybe that's why we so often get lost staring into the flames of a campfire and a wood stove. The peace that those flames bring. I really they're sort of buried somewhere down deep in our DNA. Like our ancestors have been sleeping by fires for tens of thousands of years. And every time we like sit and we stare into those golden embers, those orange flames, we're just sort of like, we're reconnecting. And as long as we stay close to the fire, everything just feels like it's going to be okay. That fire will keep those wolves at bay. <laughs> funny thing about wolves is our Stone Age ancestors knew how to live with them. Which is we got more modernized and all uppity. We started putting more and more distance between ourselves and the mountains. We slept farther and further from the fires and the ground. And we locked ourselves behind doors to keep both the storms and the wolves away. We also learned how to stop sharing with each other. We learned how to take up more space than we needed. And we learned to fear the wolf. And then we started learning to kill the wolf. It's been a while. It, it seems like at least some of us are coming back around. It took a guy like Aldo Leopold to rediscover that wolves are really the caretakers of the mountains. That an apex predator has the ability to change the course of a river if we would just put our fears aside for a little while and pay attention and see the things from the long view, from the perspective of a mountain. Letting go of fear is a very hard thing. Because sometimes, sometimes there really are 
monsters hiding beyond the light of the campfires. They're just not always the monsters we think they are. Sometimes there are other ones. I don't know, there's a lot of, um... How do I say this? The world just seems kind of messed up right now. Right, everything seems like okay right where I am now, you know? I've got a roof over my head, it's cold, I'm warm, everything seems fine. Money in the bank, food in my refrigerator, everything is fine. <laughs> but at the same time, things just kind of feel unstable for a lot of folks. People are kind of anxious. They're anxious about the future. They don't know really what's going to happen. I've got, I know I have friends who are just they're kind of worried for their children. They're worried about the planet. They're worried about their country. They're worried about their own communities. They, they just don't all agree on what's wrong and who's to blame. It's just for a lot of folks, it just feels like something bad's coming. Like there's a shadow growing on the horizon. It's like something terrible, as if the world is starting to crumble. It's like whatever it is that's holding everything together, it's starting to lose its grip. It's starting to let go. And it's in that uncertainty that a lot of people really get a lot of anxiety. Because they don't know what to do. Like in that moment, like if everything lets go, they don't know what they're going to do. And at the same time, you know, it's, they don't know exactly what it is they're supposed to be afraid of. You know, but then there's others who are just like, you know, shut up. That's just crazy talk. Everything's okay. The stock market's great. You got a job. Stop worrying. Everything's fine. Maybe. Maybe not. The problem is, too many of us don't know who to believe anymore. There's a whole lot of people that spend a lot of time trying to convince you that somebody else isn't worth paying attention to, whether they are or not. We're told to distrust our neighbors. We're, ta we're taught that we're really supposed to be suspicious of the other. Like there's some sort of evil in that stranger that we don't know. And maybe even that kind of goes back to our tribal roots. Like, we don't know. We just don't know. But we're told that we should, we, we've got every right to be afraid. We're told that we actually should be afraid. <laughs> be afraid of the wolves. Be afraid of whatever be afraid of republicans be afraid of liberals whatever be afraid and it's you know but the thing is being afraid is always profitable for somebody else fear is a very powerful emotion it gets you to do stuff it gets you to like click links it gets you to buy things it gets you to Put aside reason for a little while and follow along with somebody else. Just stay safe. We're told to cling to a flag, cling to a gun, cling to an ideology, cling to a religion, cling to some new thing. And they tell us to hold on. Whatever you do, don't let go. Don't let go. Hanging on to whatever this thing is, this is the only thing that's going to save you. Trust us. Just trust us. Don't let go, because the wolves lurking in the darkness, if you let go, they're going to get you. They're going to devour you and your children. Because it's, it's kind of hard to have hope with so much uncertainty. So much cynicism and so much cruelty in the world. It's easy to focus on that stuff. And it's easy to believe that this madness 
can ever have a happy ending. And so, in these times, we seek places of refuge from the storms and the cold misery that consumes us. And we should. We should seek out places of refuge. We should seek sanctuary when our world becomes overwhelming. We should seek out safe harbors when the storms blow. That's why these things exist. But we just can't stay there. Because that's which crumbles will continue to crumble until we stop letting it fall apart and begin putting it back together. Storms may blow, but we're going to be here after. We will be here after the storm blows through. And then stone by stone, timber by timber, we will rebuild and we will reinforce our homes, our tribes, minds we reinforce all of those things that we want to make sure last we build to endure we build our communities to endure we build our minds to endure we build our strength to endure and there's something else though Often those metaphorical wolves that we get we get convinced are so terrifying really aren't. Little Red Riding Hood was a story to teach little kids to not to wander off too far. We used a wolf. Our European ancestors loved to use wolves to scare people. Our Stone Age ancestors had a much better perspective. Sometimes, sometimes they're just stories to make us afraid, and sometimes the fuss that those wolves are making is just them trying to get us to pay attention to the things that actually matter. To get us to see the darkness that actually is lurking over the horizon. To get us to see the dangers we actually do need to prepare for. Because just like Aldo Leopold said, the wolves are the caretakers of the mountains. And their world is also our world. Our lives and their lives are intertwined. And so as warm and comfortable as that fire is, don't be afraid to step away from it and peer out into the darkness. Your eyes will adjust, and the unknown will become known. And fear, the fear that you feel, will be replaced by resolve as you throw your head back and you howl at the moon, and your voice will echo through the ridges and the valleys of the darkest night. And the true monsters true monsters are out there waiting. They will know that your fangs are bared and your claws are sharp and you're waiting for them. Have an amazing week, everybody.